Hey guys, it's Rachel from the Exotic Pet Vet channel and I'm here today to tell you how to become an exotic animal veterinarian. Um, I'm currently a fourth year veterinary student at Texas A&M and I'm on my path to become a, an exotic animal veterinarian and there's a couple different options so I'm just going to walk you through what I've done so far and what I hope to do in the future. Um, so it starts out you graduate high school, go to college. College is usually a four year plan, um, but I did mine in three years. I have a video on that that you can check out at another time. Um, once you graduate college, usually in a degree like biology or animal science, you go to veterinary school, which are four-year programs, um, at least in the U.S. So um, you graduate as a, um, a veterinary student. Usually you have experience in exotic animal medicine. Um, for me, I joined the zoo club at Texas A&M. Um, I was an officer and I um, also joined the laboratory animal club. I joined the Wildlife Disease Association and basically did everything that I could to get exotic animal experience. Um, I um, took the electives for um, zoo animals and exotic animals, uh, which a lot of vet schools have. Some vet schools, like mine, put on an exotic animal wet lab, which basically means um, students from all over the United States come together and learn how to do um, practices on um, exotic animals. So basically we do necropsies, we do um, splinting of for um, broken bones, we learn how to do surgeries or other you know, diagnostic procedures, which are really helpful for getting hands-on um, experience. Grades are also important. I'm not going to say they're everything, but definitely don't want to slack off in vet school. Um, I always try my hardest. You know, I'm not the best student by any means, um, but it's definitely something to consider. Another thing that really helps um, to becoming a exotic animal veterinarian or especially getting accepted into your residencies is research. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Research is so important um, no matter what path you choose because uh, it's, you know, the world of exotic animal medicine is current, it's always evolving. Um, there's a lot of things that we don't know yet just because these animals aren't, you know, the main focus of veterinary medicine. Um, and it's our job to learn more about them and um, improve the medicine that we know so far. Um, one way I did this, you know, I worked on um, in an exotic, or I worked in a biology research lab in undergrad that involved fish and aquatic species. We also worked with, you know, octopus and a cuttlefish. Um, and then once I came to veterinary school, I um, started my own research project actually just by talking to some prof professors and saying, this is what I'm interested in. Can I join your lab and do some work? And, you know, they were really excited to help me. Um, so I started my own project involving um, reptile parasitology. Basically, I went around to all the reptile shows, uh, which are basically like conventions where you can look at and buy um, uh, reptiles. And I asked all the vendors, you know, give me your um, reptiles fecal samples. I'll test them for free. I will, um, you know, give you the results. And in exchange, I'll have this data that I compiled to basically do a survey of the parasitic prevalence in the region. Um, so this is just, you know, it wasn't easy, but it was straightforward and it definitely helps having a first author publication for when you're applying to these internships and residencies. So I also took advantage of all the study abroad experiences that were offered to me in veterinary school. I did go to South Africa with uh, one of my favorite professors, and we studied uh, conservation medicine. Uh, we learned how to work with all sorts of um, wildlife there, including giraffes and elephants, rhinos, um, big cats like lions and cheetahs, um, really everything there, and it was incredible. Um, it's also like, you know, a different type of medicine. You, instead of working with hands-on with animals that, you know, are friendly and tame, we have to dart uh, these animals with a dart gun and, you know, they go to sleep and then you're able to work with them. And, you know, it's a lot more unpredictable and exciting, but um, different type of medicine um, that really opened my eyes towards, um, you know, the big exotic animals. I also went to uh, Thailand and Vietnam through another study abroad program. 
Um, we volunteered a lot with you know, dog and cats, spay and neuters, and farm animals, but another part of it was working with exotic animals like the elephants and um, the birds of prey, you know, the raptors, such as the owls and hawks and eagles, which was really cool in my opinion. Um, so there's a bunch of different opportunities in vet school that I think um, vet students can use to prepare themselves for um, internship and residency in the future. Another opportunity that was really helping me in vet school is the option of doing externships. Externships are like mini internships, so internships usually last like an entire year. Externships last a couple weeks and we do them during our fourth year rotations. Um, basically fourth year is split up into a bunch of two week or four week rotations where you go from one part of the hospital to the other, like cardiology, like radiology, to all the other um, parts, but um, a Texas A&M allows us to take some of these externship blocks and do them away off campus at any animal hospital or zoo or anything that you um, you know that you can prove gives you important experience. Um, I'm in the alternate track, which means I'm not you know dog or cat medicine. I'm not food animal medicine. I'm not equine. I'm something else. And this kind of gives me a little bit more freedom to choose um, where I go with my externships. I have uh, chosen to do my externships at the Dallas Zoo, the Fort Worth Zoo, um, the Toronto Zoo, Oklahoma State University because they have a good exotics program there, and um, Texas Avian Exotic Hospital. So that will help me, you know, make connections and get a lot more hands-on experience with exotic animals that I wouldn't otherwise get at um, the teaching hospital. One thing that can also help is this thing called Exotics Con that is basically a huge convention where exotic animal veterinarians come from all over the world to learn skills, basically like a giant uh, wet lab, which I was discussing earlier, but basically it's way more intense and you're learning alongside actual veterinarians and making connections, which I think is one of the most important things among um, the exotic animal world just because sometimes it's not, you know, what you did in vet school, but it's who you know that can help you get to where you want to go. Um, that really helps me. Um, I, I did do a lot of shadowing experience at Texas Avian Exotic Hospital, which I think was just um, phenomenal and like a great experience. I did get to meet a lot of amazing veterinarians that I will hopefully learn from in the future. Uh, and I think after that, you there's a couple different options as far as how you want to do exotic animal medicine. Uh, some people, they still want to do dogs and cats and just do a little bit of exotics on the side. And for them, they can probably get away with just graduating vet school and going into general practice. Um, they could do some general CE, which is like continuing education um, to, to kind of hone in on their um, skills, but they don't have to do any special learning after that. Um, so that's the shortest option. Um, to become a board certified exotic um, animal uh, vet, there are two options and both of them take pretty long time. So you're in for the long haul if you want to be an exotic vet. Um, the first one is ABVP, which stands for American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. Um, it's a species-specific self-reporting, um, you, you report your own caseload, and you do two to three years of residency. You have to have um, a couple publications, you work in private practice, and you do you know, peer review reports. Um, you can do it in avian, reptile, amphibian, or exotic companion mammal, um, and you, you know, take a test at the end of this residency. And this is mostly geared towards, I would say, um, exotic pets and not zoo animals. If you want to do zoo animals, there's another route called ACZM, which stands for the American College of Zoological Medicine. Um, it's a six-year full-time zoo practice and you do four publications um, or there's a three-year residency before you can sit for the test and do the, there's a test and a practical. Um, has a you know very low pass rate. It's very competitive. Um, I mean, both of these options are really competitive, and um, but you specialize in everything zoo. But before these two residency options, um, 
you usually have to do an internship, if not two or three, to get accepted. You can't just go straight in from veterinary school. A lot of people do a small animal rotating internship before they do an exotic animal internship. So that's adding on, you know, four years for um, undergrad, four years for veterinary school, one or two years of internship, then two to four years of residency, which, you know, adds up. Um, it's definitely not a career path for everyone. It takes a lot of work and dedication, and you have to make sacrifices. Uh, but I hope that it'll pay off and I'll get my, uh, you know, dream job in the future. So if you have any questions for things that I didn't go over, please let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And make sure to follow my channel um, here and on Instagram at Exotic Pet Vet. Um, I love to educate people on exotic animals and interesting facts. Um, so uh, leave me a comment and follow me if you can.